Somebody got in? Hey, Doug, can you hear me? Are you there? Did you get in? Guess not. Oh. He can? Great. Hey, Doug, can you hear me? I'm talking on the microphone. Testing, Doug. Test. Mr. Doug. He hears me too. Wow. Sorry about the difficulty. Something is totally wrong. It's not on my end. It's not on the streaming company's end. Something to do with the uh, servers. And, you know, we're going to try to get this done today. I'm just really trying to have other people uh, give them a chance to come back if they were here. I had to change it from a paid event to a free event. So you guys lucked out. I'll send you my address. You can send me a check. So, Mr. Mike Clark, how are you? I'm good. All right. All right. Now you want to do a special drum solo for uh, Doug, Doug Arnoff, he's from Kentucky. Hey Doug. Do um, you want to ask any questions or? Does he want to ask me any questions? I don't know, ask him. Uh, hey Doug, I can't see what you're saying or hear you, but if you want to ask anything, please, please do while I'm, uh, while, we're, while you're on and I'm on. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> so we don't get booed. Mauricio is here. Okay, Mauricio, don't go anywhere. Hey. Okay. All right. Mauricio's from Mexico. And they're coming in, right? Yeah, they're coming in. Okay. I'm going to tell my manager, everybody. All right. Uh -huh. Everybody's seeing you're making these text messages to your manager. Not a problem. You guys have any questions before? Uh... Nice. All right. You guys have any questions before <laughs> Mike uh, starts? Or you want him to kind of like uh, just play for about 20 minutes? I'll play till I drop and then uh, You want some brush work, some stick work, whatever you want to do, Mr. Mike. I'll play a little bit. Okay, go for it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna play some brushes for a while just to be different instead of bashing right away. Okay, that's great. I mean Mike should do some brush work. Thank you, Mike.
Get in there. Maybe a little sticks before we get to the questions. Okay. And gentlemen, any questions on that? I thought that was some really nice brushwork. Anything you guys want to know about brushwork? How to stir the soup? Make the sauce? No, no questions. I think uh, we're going to get a few more hits in here because I changed a few things so this does work. Okay. Mauricio, Doug, any questions? I get... He wants to know how we can play like that. How do you get to play like that, Mike? Got to take lessons from me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Oh. You uh, want to take lessons with Mike Clark, you have to go to New York City. Or yeah. when he's in Mexico, you could uh, hook up with him. It just takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of experience. What, when you, what is the case, Mike, when you do use brushes, usually... Uh, you know, you're in a different kind of environment, it's like instead of like a, a heavy duty fusion, loud kind of thing, sort of not, and everybody associates brushes with, say, the, the term cocktail music. But uh, the beauty about brushes is when you play with piano, bass, and drums, is that where you got your experience with brushes, Mike? Yeah, I just played a lot of bebop gigs, a lot of jazz gigs, a lot of trios, and I just learned to uh, play the brushes since I was a kid. I've been playing them all my life, you know, and. Uh, I, I find I'm not inhabited by, uh, I, I'm not hemmed in by playing brushes. If I play a ballad, every little move I make is part of the rhythm. So I, I enjoy doing this. I play a ballad, uh, I, I don't think that you have to play um, stupid licks or anything, you know, I, I can play almost everything that I do with the sticks. So. So it's not boring for me to play ballad play a ballad, you know, I, I don't feel hemmed in. Which way am I looking? This way? I'm looking over here because you you're over here, you but I mean, <laughs> are you guys out there or are you over here? Or where? <laughs> now you know anyway, um, so um, learn to do pretty much everything you can do with the sticks with the brushes. And it'll serve you well. It's an interesting, playing the brushes is uh, very interesting to me. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That's real okay. nice. Very nice. Anyway, uh, the gentleman asked who, who he wants to play like that. How do you play like that? He should take lessons from you. Yeah. He says like, he has your book, so it's not working. So can you get a refund? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure. I'll be glad to send you a refund. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Just do what your thing. It's your show. All right. Let me just see here. Yeah. All right.
first, let me answer this. Ask this. Hey, you gentlemen, would you like me to send you the PDF note for note for that one? <laughs> I'll play it again so that you can get it. Uh, yeah, I'll play exact. I missed exact. that part. Anyway, uh, want to talk about drum solos, like structures of drum solos? Yeah, uh, I find myself better off if I play a, a form like 32 bars. If I play 32 bars, like. that then I have uh, some I feel like I'm saying something I feel like I'm uh, if I'm just playing over a flat surface like one chord where I'm just like <laughs> um, you know I can do a lot of stuff but I feel better if I'm playing a blues or a, or a form so I, I try to become really uh, adept at playing I don't just say rhythm changes I'll play really a bebop style so you can hear everything like one, two, one, two, three. at the top, 32 bars, right? So I made that real obvious so I could mark off all the sections. Sometimes I go over a section on purpose because in my mind I know where I am. But I can also play very avant-garde because I worked on playing song structures. So if I did the same thing, like one, two, one, two, three, four. still playing 32 bars even though it sounds like I'm going nuts. So um, if you know how to do that, if you know how to play song structures and song forms, then you can really tell the band during the drum solos where you are. Um, since I'm not Buddy Rich, I'm not going to go one, two, one, two, three, four after 20 minutes of playing. So the band has to know where I am. Okay? Let's talk about um, hi-hat displacements. Traditionally... <laughs> But um, after a certain point, um, to be a little more expansive, I play the hi-hat where I want to, but I know where the song is, and I know where the one, two, three, four is, I know where the top of the beat is, <coughs> I know where the beat is, period. So I can put the hi-hat where I want.
Well, they they want to know, Mike, and that was great, by the way. I Thank mean, you. I like that displacement and not the norm. You're taking it outside. Uh, the questions that are coming in is how do you develop that? <laughs> well, basically, you know, you practice. Yeah, but I yes. Let me finish. Go ahead. For you, what they want to know is uh, how you develop the structure when you're playing. Do you hum the tune? Do you listen to the tune? What, uh. do, you, what do you do? Um, at this point, I've listened to so much jazz music that I, I know most of the standard tunes and I know a heck of a lot of jazz tunes. So, uh, yes, I know the structure to the tunes, the form. I also know the melodies. So, I don't have to count to know where I am in the form. I can just hear it by now. It's like... Uh, it's like anything you do. If you do it enough, it becomes second nature. It's like I just know. Sometimes I hum the tune because it's fun in my head, or I hear the tune. But sometimes, if I'm playing a drum solo, I will hear a tenor player or a trumpet solo. The trumpet player in my mind is playing over the changes of the tune. I'm backing him up, even though it sounds like a drum solo. You know, So all kinds of uh, little games I play with myself to entertain myself while playing uh, music that swings. If I'm playing a fun gig and everything is like If I solo on that, then I'm like just kind of um, uh, I, I'm actually starting to figure this drum set out this is Matt set and it's coming to me now I'm getting better <laughs> anyway I'm like yeah so anyway yeah like that anyway what they, they know what the, the, how to develop the form is that what they're, they're saying what is an open solo compared to a form well an open solo is you're not playing over a form you're just playing like uh, an open solo would be like <laughs> Just making this stuff up. You know, I can take uh, my time and sort of try to challenge my hands and challenge my technique and challenge my ideas. If I'm playing over a form, I have to play the song. Now, let's say I'm playing over I Got Rhythm. Do we know this song? Do you guys know that song? I'm asking you questions now. Do you guys know I Got Rhythm? I Got Rhythm. I know it. Well, I know you know it. <laughs> Uh, it takes a little time to enter here because there's no Oh, okay. Way. Well, anyway, if I'm playing over song form, then maybe I can't really, uh, I'm not thinking about the kind of drum ideas or the technique or, or I'm thinking more of the song. So if I'm playing I Got Rhythm, I'm like three, four. <laughs> concentrating on the form of the song you know and I can play very simple or more complex whatever at this point I'm hearing the tune in my head whereas if I'm just playing over a open surface I can change tempos I can be at this tempo 
and I can go here. What's the difference? I, there's no song form that I'm playing, so I can just try to graceful, gracefully take myself from into different tempos or whatever. Usually when you're playing a song form, you don't re want to really do that. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe double time, maybe half time, but you've got to kind of be true to the A-A-B-A, -A -A, two A sections, a bridge, and an A section if we're talking 32 bars. Blues, 12 bars. So no matter how crazy you go, you've got to be there at the end of the day. Whereas if you're playing open, it doesn't matter when you stop. I don't think. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. I just went over to the other side of the room. How did you get turned godfather of funk when you were a really great jazz drummer? How did you get that turn? I paid a lot for that. I went to the <laughs> mafia. My mother's Italian, so I sought out... No, I'm sorry. Um, somebody else called me that. I don't have anything... I never said anything about linear funk. I didn't... Yeah, this kind of funk thing I play like... Uh, I never uh, called that linear funk. I started playing this way. And, and then doubles and paradiddles. Somebody else called that linear funk. I do not call myself the godfather of funk. I would say the godfather of funk who's alive today would be Bernard Purdy or Clyde Stubblefield or um, uh, Jabbo Stark. Those cats would be the godfathers of funk. I would be the nephew of funk, but I'm uh, really not a funk. I'm not a, once again, I'm not a funk drummer who plays jazz. I'm a jazz drummer that plays funk. That's why my funky stuff sounds bent, like I'm like. It's all a setup. All of this is the setup for improv. out funk drummer than I am. I can play pocket like uh, I, I used to be able to. I did plenty of gigs like that for years, but I'm sort of more in an open creative space now. Unless you want to give me some real money, then I'll play time. Uh, so I set most of my funk stuff up so it'll sound, so it'll be open for a more jazzy, a more interactive, a more communicative, a more conversational, a more whatever space than for me to, you know, it sets a nice backdrop or an environment for me and others to be able to improvise, which is what I usually do. So uh, when it comes to paying the bills, there's nothing wrong with this. Not saying that, but for me, I find this. A little more interesting. Very nice, Mike. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a question about ghost notes and about your book. Okay. The funk drumming book. Yeah. And wait, one more. And compound it with. How do you develop your ghost notes? Um. I hate that term. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I would say when I was young, uh, we we I came from uh, um, when I played funk gigs. The root was this. And on the records, there was somebody a lot of times playing tambourine. So we didn't, we couldn't afford a tambourine player. You'd have a four-piece band. This is true. So I was working in Texas and down south, and I started putting this. That's how it started for me. I found it necessary to do that, not all the time, depending on the tune. And then that led to a more 
sophisticated. <laughs> jazz influence but at the beginning it was this uh, then in the fusion days you you had to play very loud and so and fast so everything right <laughs> When I played jazz, if you played fast tempos, I would divide the hi-hat and the bass drum. So I took all those jazz ideas and just ran it as one long. And uh, that helped me to deal with like all of the extremely abusive, loud, amplification of so-called fusion music. I didn't make that word up either. <laughs> but it was extremely loud. I mean, it was no, I was, I was used to this. I wasn't used to playing uh, at these huge volumes. So in order to deal with it, uh, I came up with a whole bunch of ghosting. Okay. That was the other part. <laughs> sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, you, you pointed me for questions. I'm so. No, I no, no, no. You're the guy. You, you're the guy. I was playing. Go ahead. I was playing around. Go on. All right. Well, so some of these questions that are coming in here, you know, he, the one, one man is asking me, well, how do you? He's not. He knows he's not going to make a living <coughs> playing drums. He's going to do a living. He's going to play drums for fun, and he wants to play well. Again, what do you recommend? Uh, play every day. Uh, play four or five days a week. Play a lot. And uh, I, you don't have to practice 10 hours a day. Play until you're tired of playing. Play uh, when it's joyful for you to sit down. When you sit down the drums, if it feels lousy and you don't want to play, don't play. If you're going to really try to be great, then you have to practice. That's different than just playing for fun. That's work. And if you're going to do that, then you got to dig in and get the rudiments and the hands going, hands and feet, different ideas, coordination, four-way coordination, independence, blah, blah, blah. Then we're talking, then you got to practice. Uh, when I sit down to practice, I don't play what I know. Like when I go in the practice room, I'm not like... <laughs> I, I don't play what I know. I try to do things I don't know, you know. Otherwise, to me, I'm, if I'm doing something I know, I'm not practicing unless it's building uh, reflexes, which is boring and fatiguing and it's hard and you've got to have some serious dedication to keep those chops up. So there's several levels to this, you know, in my humble opinion. Uh, your book, Mike. I guess we could show everybody the book. Okay. They know they know the book. I think it's coming up. You know, I have some CDs in that stick bag right over there. I could get them in, but except I can't get out from behind. Drum you. drumming by Mike Clark. See that? Oh, yeah, here's you. Look at that young drummer on the cover. Yeah, Who's that? that? The Who new that? young cat. The younger brother. The new young dude. That yeah, man. Look at that guy. Uh, you want to talk about that? You have CDs, you said. Um, I do. I get them. Uh, thank you. Yeah, well, this is obviously my book, Funk Drumming, and it has, like, my style, all of this ghost and... <laughs> type of... Uh, that was a little hard there, sorry. Uh, type of uh, mentality, concepts. It has all of my um, different ways of looking at things. I kind of took the New Orleans... <laughs> and made a thing out of it. My old, a lot of New Orleans guys would be, be mad and say that's not authentic. They're right. That's my way of doing it. But um, uh, a lot of my Oakland stuff. Well, a 
a lot of weird Oakland feels. <laughs> to push the fields instead of being relaxed like we'd be like of course we were all in our 20s you know so um so that's what's in the book now my cds or at least some of them this is my latest the red one wolf this is uh, with christian mcbride excuse me the great christian mcbride um also uh, the great trumpet player Wallace Roney, and this is Michael Wolf on piano and myself, Michael Clark, on drums. Haley Nicewanger, who plays uh, with Miss Spaulding, which is a great gig, and a great alto player that's new and visible and downbeat right now. She's new on the scene and she's very, very good. And Daryl Johns, a great bass player. This is the Wolf and Clark Expedition 2. And on it is some uh, forward thinking, I would like to think it's forward thinking type jazz. Post pop. Where can they purchase it? Okay. <clears throat> two. Wolf and Clark two. And you can get that, you know, Amazon, this, that, the other, all over the place. You want me to do it? Maybe they can see it for me. Let's see. Uh, can you guys see this? Wolf and Clark Expedition two. Uh, this is an uh, older one. This is Blueprints of Jazz. And on here is Donald Harrison, Christian McBride, Patrice Russian, Jed Levy, um, and Rob Dixon. And uh, this is, uh, both of these were in the high in the jazz charts for three months. And this one here, the one that Matt just showed you, uh, Blueprints of Jazz, was one of the uh, top uh, 10 uh, in downbeat of the year. That was 2010 or 9 or something like that. Anyway, um, Mike Clark, uh, Drummer Mike Clark is my website where you can get more information. If you want to buy some of these, send me a check for $153,000 and I'll get them right out to you immediately. It's like not a lot of money for some That's of you. That's a cheap price, Mike. I'd say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, there was the one guy who loves this book, the folk drumming book, and he just said he started working on him, the exercises, and it's so difficult for him to develop the accents and the sound and the feel. Well, you know, I think some students here, or some of the guys, the drummers, just think, you know, you buy the book and you open it up and you start playing and it's going to sound good. Well, well, here's what I think you have to balance your drum set. Like, if you have ghost notes, you don't want them to be like. So you got to balance it. You know? So you want to balance the whole kit. Um, you know, it's like if you're playing jazz, you're not always playing as loud as you can, so it's a lot of different texture. at the top all the time. Very nice, Mike. Very nice. There seems to be no more questions here. They have the information about your uh, brand new CD and your past CDs and your book. Do you have any future books coming out? I'm not working. Um, I am working on a, a, a bebop and postbop book now, but I'd probably put it out myself. I haven't sent it to a company. First of all, it's not finished. And uh, that's what I'm working on. I have no, it's going to probably take me another year to finish it because I have a fairly serious w touring and work schedule. So it's hard to just take three months and devote it to, for me it is, to, to a book, which is to be fair, I, and to, 
make a great book, I would have to. When I did this one, I just took three months out of my life and started writing and going over things and find, you know, it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you know. <laughs> yeah. Any, anyway, here, here. Uh, you're in collaboration. You're writing another book somehow with somebody else. Is that well, I'm writing it. Uh, the guy that's going to, you know, I'm going to play, and then my friend will transcribe Towner Gallagher. So I'm not writing it. It's my stuff that I'm playing. It will be my phrasing. My drumming comes from like Max Roach, you know. <laughs> Because I was into him quite young, Philly Joe, all those guys, I, I developed some pretty nasty phrases. That one kind of came off weird. But, and then is when Elvin and Tony Williams and Jack DeJanet and Lenny White and these people became popular. I made uh, advancements in my own, I became more expansive uh, as <clears throat> those people influenced me. So not now my drumming is much different than it was when I began with the Max Roach thing. Not that it's any better or more advanced than him because I'm not saying I can play like Max Roach. I never transcribed a drum solo in my life. I would hear what somebody was doing. My generation is usually like this. And then I <clears throat> would kind of do my version of that. So when I say I'm playing like Max Roach, I do not mean that I can play like Max Roach at that level. <clears throat> He's one of my heroes. What I mean is I took what I thought, some, some of the parts of his drumming and different people's cymbal work that I liked and uh, threw it in a pot, stirred it up, and made my own scene out of it. You, you, you feel me on this? It's like I never really wrote down. But I know he played triplets with singles. <laughs> I do them with paradiddles. So I would make my own way of doing another, what I heard another guy doing. I'd go see these guys live and I'd see, I'd investigate uh, what they were doing. <laughs> Philly used to play this, Philly Joe. I made my drumming more conversational, so I'm, I'm not, I can be a straight time player and play uh, right on the beam, or I can be more uh, loose. right now but what I mean is a more open sound than um, okay does that make sense did that make sense to anybody I sort of went on in anyway, the, I don't know where I went in the middle there I went I somewhere must I, say, I must say my drums sound nice Mike yeah they, they do I am enjoying playing them <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> Steve W was was uh, interested. I mean, was thankful for. Uh, I want to thank them. Me too. For sponsoring this part of it, and your other companies, which are what? Um, I play uh, uh, innovative percussion drumsticks, which I really dig. Um, can you see the I give it name? On, uh, I love these drumsticks. They get a good cymbal sound. Um, yeah, there you go. Aha! Uh, Istanbul uh, cymbals. I play the Epoch line. This is an Agop here. Oh, wait. Uh, no. Uh, this is Epoch also. These are the Lenny White 
line of symbols. This symbol here is one of the symbols made from the Tony Williams uh, Nefertiti symbol, the ride. This ride symbol has a lot of beautiful sounds. sounds out of all these. Nice crash, um, low pitch and good stick. And, and I like the uh, hi-hats, dark, but you can hear them. About the heads, right? They sound nice. Uh, I use Evans G1s on everything, on everything. DW drums, of course, and uh, uh, that's it. That's what I do. That's what I use. You well, know. I, want, I also want to thank him for making this possible. That's very nice of him. And I've been playing DWs all my life. I'd like a T-shirt. Uh, is it mad? Yeah, I guess that. Says it, it all. I'm on the wall there. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I see. All right. Okay. Uh, um. If you want to have anything else that you want to do, you just want to solo this out, or yeah, maybe I'll solo a little bit. Unless anybody, do these guys want to say anything to me, or uh, Mike came in here? All right. Anybody want have any more questions? Somebody's called. Somebody's calling me now. Another student for Matt. Yeah, I told him to wait. <laughs> I tell you, the telephone rings in the inappropriate time, but that's okay. I'm sorry, Mike. You just oh, want to play, I'm play fine. out. Okay, I'll play a little bit. A few. You, um, There's no questions. No questions at all. Is everybody still there, or am I just Everybody's playing? Here. Okay.
understand that Mike got a standing ovation. <laughs> uh, anyway, you. we got one more question. Uh, the name of the symbols again, the make and the sizes. Okay. Um, these are all Istanbul. E P O C H. E P O C H. 22. Uh, this is a 20 crash ride. 22 ride. Uh, 17 crash. 18 crash. And uh, 13 inch hi hat. I should do it. Okay. On that. That's good. You okay now? I'm fine. Right, I'd like to thank you, Mike, and hopefully we we'll get you again. Say six years from Tuesday. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next guy uh, we're going to have uh, is Mr. Alan Herman. He's sitting in the audience here now. And uh, for those online students that are listening, uh, there's not going to be any lesson tonight and Friday. I'll be back Monday. And again, I'd like to thank the DW, Evans, the Symbol Company, and the Stick Companies. And Mr. Mike Clark for taking his time and sharing with everybody his concepts and techniques. So, with that being said, gentlemen, it's time to get a cigarette. All right, thank you, Mr. Mapatella, for having me, and I just want to leave you with this. That's supposed to be. See you, thank you. <laughs>